no one's doing anything that is that much different from the other guy, other than the level of effort, I would say, that they put into these things. One thing I really want to talk about here is what can you control or affect if you're in an incident? What are you prepared to do? Do you even know who's leading your response? Do you know what the trigger items are to bring in your IRP? Do you even know what the plan is or do you even have an IRP? IRPs are multifaceted and build upon each other. They're interrelated as well as being interdependent. Anyone who tells you otherwise and they can write you a single IRP, I think they're selling you snake oil. Unless they are in your environment, they understand your workflow, they can't do it for you. IRPs are living, breathing documents that change as much as your network and your systems, or even you and your approach to life and dealing with incidents. Here's another question for you guys. Do you even know if you're being attacked? Do you have that level of insight into your systems to identify and flag potential security issues? If you don't, you should really get together with your security vendors and understand their capabilities and understand you still own the risk. Just because they say they are your partners, and for those looking at this on video, those are air quotes going up, doesn't mean they're going to share your risk. Your risk profile is exactly that in yours. Yes, you can subrogate a claim or your insurance company can subrogate a claim later on. But the fact of the matter is you are boots on the ground and you have to deal with it. Circling back to my point, how do you know if you're under attack? Do you have any type of enrichment data that is being parsed? Even if it's being thrown up against static rules to identify something, it's still better than nothing. But ask the hard questions. How do you know if you're going to be attacked? What is your level of visibility into your software, your servers, your network, and everything else that you have? Are you doing real asset inventory or are you just scratching the surface, putting out an SNMP probe and dragging data in to sit in an Excel spreadsheet and you have no concept of what's there? What's your level of correlation against everything? If you can't do that, find a company or a service and make them give you a 90 day proof of concept. doesn't matter if you're a two person operation, you deserve the time, the comfort from your vendors to really understand their platform and what it is that they are selling you. Otherwise you're just going to pay an invoice and you're going to be screwed. God forbid you have an incident. One of the biggest things that I've noticed in the last two or three weeks dealing with Log for Shell, or maybe it's the last week, feels like a year dealing with Log for Shell, but how are you dealing with shadow IT and appliances that are not a part of your asset inventory? No asset inventory is ever 100% accurate 100% of the time. You may get 100% accuracy, but the next time you breathe, I guarantee you it's probably out of whack. And what do I mean by shadow IT? You have employees, you have vendors that are coming in and dropping systems and hardware onto your network. Unless you have real change control policy, you're using something like MAC address whitelisting to allow them on the network, you're going to have things that you don't know about. Are they being patched regularly? The biggest issue I see in any company are VoIP devices. Those phones on your desk that connect to your phone system via the internet. When less have they been updated? Are they even being updated? Do your providers care? Or are they just collecting that monthly recurring revenue to make sure they are paid, but they're leaving a vector of attack in a jump box sitting on your desk on the same network as everything else? At the very least, VLAN those things if you can't answer all of my questions on that. Another thing I want you guys to think about, what are your key providers covering? Are you dependent on them for your patching? Are you dependent on them for notification? What do they owe you? Because you pay them for a service. And if you don't know that, there's no way you can build your IRP. There's no way you can build realistic process and procedures. So go ahead, ask those questions of your vendors before and during your engagements. They owe you that much. And if they can't give you a straight answer, you should really do a top-down audit of that service as it pertains to your company. And if you're not satisfied, move on, do some POCs. It's okay. I know we all make fun of people for shiny toy syndrome, but sometimes that's just what you have to do. Now, one of the other things I want to talk about is when someone finds an issue or an incident, what are they going to do? Who do they speak to? 
what's the process for putting in the report? What happens to that report when it comes in? Do you have a vulnerability disclosure process for your company or your platform for anything that you do? These are things you really need to get into and make available in a document and training to your people. Your people are your greatest asset, but if you don't train them, they can be your greatest risk, barring insider risk, of course, as we saw with Unify or what's unfolding with Unify. But that's a whole other incident that I'm sure we'll get to at some point in time. How about your business continuity plans? When last have you actually tested them? When last have you tested your backups to make sure they are fully functional? Are you asking your backup provider, whoever, whether it's internal, external, backup as a service or Kool-Aid as a service, whatever it is, when last have you asked them to test restore a random file? Here's my last soapbox topic of the day. How are you going to help your teams or how are you going to help prevent your teams from burning out? I've seen many IT providers wear this badge of honor that they haven't slept in two, three, four days. Well, here's the thing. Your cognitive decline is not worth that badge of honor because if you can go more than 24 hours without sleep, how do you know you checked a file? How do you know you checked that line of code? How do you know you check anything? Because it all starts to turn to mush. Make sure you have a rotational schedule for your people to get time off. Make sure they're eating, hydrating, sleeping, because they are no use to you if they're just a zombie. And with that, I'm done for now. Ladies and gentlemen, and ghouls that are out there on the internet, if you have made it this far, thank you so much for tuning in for yet another episode of Amplified and Intensified.com. You know what? A recent change to the platform. Shiva has put together a new website, Amplified and Intensified.com. If you have heard anything that you have liked about this podcast and you want to engage Shiva or myself or be able to help sponsor by donating us some, some coffee, all the links of our calendars buying us coffee past episodes of both the podcast and the youtube version are all now on amplified and intensified.com go there for all of your needs thank you so much and until next time take care